a CI 1948 here. Uh, put a uh, thrush muffler on the 96 Dodge Ram. What was on it was this little thing. Little thing, it's actually a pretty good size muffler it had on there. But as you can see, it had a few holes in it. And uh, as you can hear, quite a bit of rust. Look at that. Even where the numbers are, it routed holes through. I don't know if you can see that, there's actually holes routed through the middle of the numbers. So, uh, yeah, I had a thrush welded muffler that I actually bought for the Falcon, but I never ended up using it on it. I need to do a review on these tires. They're, uh, they're doing really well. I like them. These Thunder track grips. But uh, I threw that on there. I had to adapt it, and then I put an adapter on there to space it out so it would fit. But, uh, yeah, it sounds really good. Ah, but I think I might put something a little quieter on there. I don't know yet. It's a little bit on the loud side. And I bought a, I bought a uh, tip for it. So I'll go ahead and fire that up. unbearably loud it's just a little bit loud go up here in the cab yeah. try and get you in the cab here close the door having a tripod makes things difficult doesn't it this trucks up to 187,906 miles on it Not too bad in here. Roll windows down. Try not to wake the neighbors up. I think they're up already though. <laughs> but all right. There's a reason I want to move out to the country and get out of town. But um, all right. Yeah. The um, a little update on this truck while we're here. The Infinity sound system radio finally quit working, so I had. I could just put a normal one in here, but the speakers and everything still work. This little, uh, oh, I can't remember what it was. It was a car auto, auto drive. This little adapter thing's been doing good. I got a CB installed up there, a little Undlin. There's a Pro 510XL. I just got it stuffed up there. I need to do a little better cable management. But I got it run out to the uh, Hustler, what is it, New Neutronics Hustler antennas, I believe is what they are. But it works good. It, good reception, even with the antennas slanted back the way they are. Got them kind of slanted back. Only one's actually hooked up, so everyone's just aesthetic at the moment. <laughs> but I like the way it looks. Put a little 250 off an earlier Ram truck on it. I just found them at a uh, uh, antique store for like 10 bucks for the pair. Tires are holding up real well. The Hunter brush guards holding up real well. The headlights, the Super 4x4 headlights, they're doing real good. They still work great. These projector headlights. I don't know if I actually did a video on them. No, I don't think I did. I have to do a video on these. I see on the forums that uh, a lot of questions get asked about these. They're not that great. Um, they put out light, but <laughs> I'll show you how they look. 
Right, there you go. There it is all lit up. It's got two halo beams and then this strip that goes across the top. Now to wire these in was oh, quite a quite a trick. It's not just plug and play. It claims it is, but it's definitely not. And I don't remember exactly what wires I had to switch, but um, maybe I'll look on the back here and see if we can show you what I had to do here. By the way, I took the truck lights off that parts truck I bought, the fog lights, and I stuck them in. I just got them wired in with the, I think I put them in with the parking light. I don't remember. I just ran the wire. I took the whole wiring harness, clipped them together, and uh, just ran it up with that. So now I got fog lights on both sides, so that looks pretty good. But the trick with these is, this never had fog lights. I'll have to see if I can find the part and show you what I did. All right, let's start with lie down these fog lights. Um, originally, since this truck never had fog lights, I would have had to take this whole plastic bezel, this piece in, this whole piece goes all the way across here. I would have had to take this whole piece out, and that would have required me taking this bump rush guard off, the bumper off, uh, bending it forward, undoing the clips that holds this in, and then snaking it out through the back there. I didn't want to do that. <laughs> so, I took my little cutoff wheel here. I went so far in. And this here is actually what was in there and the light won't fit. But the good thing about um, these bumpers is they already have up under here. You probably can't see it but now. But you can pop this up and it's already got the holes there where these actually mount in. So I just took the bolts, stuck them through, and I was able to clip this in. But the trick was I had to go in and cut about this much, I don't know, inch, two inch, something like that. But I did, I took this, I went in there and just cut all the way around the circle. I took this guard off and just did a whole circle just like that. Filed it down. And honestly, I like the way it looks better. Because the other ones always had this giant gap around these. And this one here, it's a lot more flush looking. I mean, there's still a little gap. But it looks more like it's just, it doesn't have a ton of gap around it. So, all right. There's that. Now let's talk about the other uh, other light. All right, now we move on to the headlights. Now someone's going to say that I did that wrong, and you're right. But it was the middle of winter. That's what I had on hand, and that's what I went with. So I've yet to have any issues with it. No moisture gets up in here, really. And uh, I got plenty of other lights to get me home if one of these decides to stop working. So I'm not real worried about it, so neither should you. But don't do this with yours. <laughs> so, um, on this one, it was it was a real pain to get the, all the halo lights and the light strip to work. They all had their own positive and negative coming off of them on this. So I, I took all the positives and put them together into one wire. I spliced them all together into one. And then um, all the negatives I put together into one. And then I had one ground spliced in on the ground side, which... I believe was the center, but I can't say for no. I can't remember. Anyway, anyway, the important thing you're after for the headlight part, you can figure out the LEDs because I ended up putting all the no, I put all the positives to the power to the positive side of the turn uh, running lamp. But uh, on this part, uh, we went red to white. This will get your main headlights working, but red to white. And then it goes black to red, and then white to black. And that will get your main high beam, low beam bulbs going. The LED, I know I ended up taking all the positives and routing them to one of the wires on the turn signal. But I don't remember one, or the parking light, not the turn signal, yeah, the parking part of the light. But... Uh, it's been a, it's probably been a good year I've had these on here, so I can't tell you for sure on that. But if you're looking to rewire one of these, that is how you want to do it. Red to white, black to red, white to black. And then now get your high beam, low beam out of it. But give yourself enough room off the back of this plug here, and give yourself enough room here, so, so you got room to splice them together right. So... There you go on that, but I don't really recommend these. I think I mean, once these get all cloudy and go but start going bad, I think I'm just going to go back to factory and just run with them. 
because these kind of look cool but at the same time the amount of light and then the housings they don't uh the beam that they put off one's like really high and i can't adjust it any lower and the other one's really low and i can't adjust it any higher so <laughs> it does me a lot of good so actually these yellow fog lights here kind of make up the middle ground that it misses and then those other fog lights you know they're like real close up but but uh yeah so that's about it on that um ended up getting a new water pump put in this truck it um I, it was the same day i was putting these getting these tires put on the, they had it up on the rack there and it uh started leaking half free so got that changed out and um yeah other than that no real issues with this truck um runs great and transmission still shifts smooth uh 360 magnum yeah. Love this truck. The four-wheel drive works great in the winter. I had those Firestone Destination, I know, Fire no, Destinations on that truck. Uh, Transforce All Terrains is what I had on this, or what it came with. But, and they did really great in the snow. Between this truck's weight and those, I didn't even notice I was driving on snow. So I'm hoping these things bite in and do pretty good. There's a lot of grip on there. I have to do another, these things I have to get their own video at some point. I keep telling myself that and still haven't done it. Still got the rust hole. She's needs new front fenders really. And starting to get a little surface rust down here. I don't like that. Well I did, I took some oil and sprayed it all up into here and it seems like it stopped it. It hasn't really gotten any worse. So hopefully I think I'm gonna hit that again. And then up underneath here. I painted the frame when I first got it and uh, I think it's getting time for another paint job and clean all this off. And I want to keep this truck as good for as long as I can. Which is kind of hard to do because these trucks do rot out. There's bubbling starting there which I can't get behind here to do anything about. There's bubbling starting there. but. The good thing about the bed is the beds are easy to change out. The cab is a little harder to fix. Uh, the clear coat, it's peeling. I figured it would. I, when I first got this truck, I ended up uh, doing some uh, Rust-Oleum clear coat. It kind of helped it a little bit. There's still a little bit of shine to that, but the factory clear coat's coming off. Hopefully that doesn't take my decal off with it. Oh well, they were cheap. But <laughs> I loved it, it's got that. I always see online people are like, where can I get those? And I'm like, I don't know, but uh, I think there is a place that started remaking them, but they're expensive. <laughs> it's missing the A and the other one's missing the let part of the letter, but I don't care. <laughs> but, all right, well. bit of rust hole there but other than that not real bad a little bit like i say surface rust starting down in there's good yet but yeah the dash is cracked like all these dodges but it's not terrible i got mad on it i know someone's going to ask about the fog light no i didn't wire the fog light in since i got it hooked in with the normal headlight switch. I just put it there just to make the dash look full. I took it out of the other truck. <laughs> I was originally gonna gonna do that but uh, I got looking at it and I'd have to steal all the wires out of that because this actually doesn't have wire ran up like I hoped it would. Like a factory wire just to plug it in real quick because down under the front cross member there's actually a plug for the plug-in for for that is that for the headlights where they their fog lights where they come in is actually there but um there's nothing up here so i'm guessing like somewhere at the fuse box or the fuse box under the hood there must be wires that run up to this switch but don't know it's just there for looks <laughs> oh well now i ended up to stealing the uh, plastic uh kick guard knee pad knee guard out from the other truck too so yeah i'm 
pretty happy about this truck. Just thought I'd do a quick little video. Originally, this was just going to be about the thrush muffler. And, well, I'm sure you've probably clicked off the video by now. You probably clicked off the video by now. But, uh... Sounds good. But, uh... But yeah, thanks for watching. Just a quick little video on something. I felt like making some sort of video today. I've just been busy and just haven't had a ton of time. And hopefully I'll be getting more videos out on that thing. That, um, that there, that 1951 Minneapolis Moline Model V. Boy, the last video I actually did on this, uh, I think I still had the front end apart, I think the last one I, I had all this front end apart yet, but uh, I've got rear end apart right now, and uh, that's that was the big thing waiting on bearings to come in, and now I got in on that held hauler, which is looking really good. That's all done. But um, this here, I don't know if you saw the first video, but had a lot of play in it, and now it's all good, and you had new bearings put in it, and so. But yeah, pretty pretty happy with it. It uh, need to get a, all the. Well, I want to take this rear end apart fur. That's part of the reason it's been taking me so long. I want to take these wheels off. I want to take fenders off and strip everything down. I want to take get into these <clears throat> these bottom housings. Take them off, drain them, put new fluids in them, reseal them. And you know that just it takes time and. Uh, and then I gotta work on getting the engine going, and <laughs> it's just ah, uh, finding the time to do all this is just getting harder. And then it's going in the winter, and uh, yeah, so I don't know how many more projects there are gonna be this year. And there really haven't been that many videos this year either. I know, uh, but uh, maybe next year I'll get a little more into making these if I get a little more time. I'm hoping once I get that shed put up that uh, I'm gonna, my shed and my new house and everything get that all done. It's been been a real slow process waiting on paperwork to clear and just uh, but but yeah, hope, hoping to get uh, I'm gonna do a lot of bondo filling in on that fender. Get some over here. It started to turn out all right, but but um, yeah, but hoping get that house my new house built and get moved out to the new shop and maybe I'll be a lot more motivated and I'm wanting the new shop to be heated and air conditioned and think about putting tubing in the floor for radiant heat so I can work out during the winter it's just I'm gonna build it I'm gonna build it right you know because this here is not quite built right it's it was thrown on a pretty junky concrete slab and I did get the water to stop coming up in here and fixed all the Drainage issues over the well, most of the drainage issues are still still need to get on that building there. But I got a trench dug all the way out, so it drains away. So <laughs> that makes a big difference. But this is just kind of a vlog, I guess. <laughs> all right, well, I don't know what else to say about it. Uh, thanks for watching. I did do a video on that thing. I'm gonna see if um, see if I got enough good footage yet to this little kerosene heater. I don't know if it fire up right now or not. May not have any kerosene left in it. Huh? Huh? Hey, she had something in her. Yeah, very low. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it's almost out. But uh, puts off a good amount of heat, though. But yeah, I bought that thing to kind of help keep the shop warm. It brought it up a little bit. This plus that, it made it tolerable in here. I kind of wish I would have bought one of those torpedo heaters instead. I think they put out a little better, at least for blowing heat around. But. That thing is the ceramic electric heater. But, you know, it bring the temperature up to where it'd be comfortable enough to work in here. Uh, yeah, I think that's going to do it for this video. Do 
you that up too. All right. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.